Welcome everyone to our daily uh, market analysis call and this is for trading on December 15th, 2017. So just a quick disclaimer before we get started. This is for educational, <coughs> excuse me, educational purposes only. Trading is a risky business, so please be careful with your money. All right, so let's get started with our Forex factory here. So a very, very busy day in terms of central banks. We had multiple central banks that came out. So um, the big thing here was with ECB, Draghi basically said that he is going to support the stimulus package, which is, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, um, which is basically your quantitative easing program. So anytime there is um, quantitative easing, um, that is not good for the economy. So um, it doesn't look like there are, ECB has any plans of uh, cutting back on the stimulus here. Sorry, one second. Excuse me. Um, okay, so, so it doesn't look like they have any um, any plans on cutting back on that. And as a result of that, we saw a big drop. Uh, we saw a drop in euro here. So it was not positive for the euro. But in terms of Bank of England, we didn't really hear anything that was really that negative. Um, so uh, your ECB was basically more negative for the for the euro. So just the whole stimulus. Anytime there's stimulus, it's bad for the for the currency. Okay, so so that's what's going on here. So a lot of central banks. So tomorrow coming up, um, we have. Um, <coughs> Excuse me, um, not a ton of red data. We have Empire Manufacturing, Empire State Manufacturing Index, Capacity Utilization Rate, Industry Production. So these numbers are important, but in light of what we have seen earlier um, in the week, these are you know just the medium type of numbers. So all the central banks and everything else, uh, those were the main, um, main things this week. So it uh, shouldn't be too bad um, going into Friday here. Not much in the, um, in the uh, sorry, UK session. Just uh, mostly everything is in the US session. And also um, we are going into holiday trading now. So after this week, most people um, will be starting into starting the holidays and stuff like that. So with that, what that means is um, from trading perspective, liquidity dries up in the market, which means the moves can be more exaggerated because a small order can push the market around. So just, just be mindful of that. So we are back into the, the holiday um, after this week. We are into holiday uh, trading sort of scenarios. So um, just keep that in mind as you're trading. Okay, so in terms of our um, outlook here for Euro US dollar daily here, uh, this is a bearish uh, close for the day. So I'm looking for um, Euro to drop further, Euro dollar here, looking for it to go back into this 1.1714 area back into this level once again. So it did push back after FOMC, but ECB with ECB it dropped and now I'm looking for it to go back and test this level again. So the bias here for the Euro is to the downside. So we had a pin bar here and now I'm looking for price to drop. So I'm uh, looking for it to pull back into this uh, green line here into the pivot point and then drop from there. So the target would be 1.1720, which is this previous bottom here. So that will be our target for this. Uh, so my bias is to the downside for Euro dollar. Pound dollar here, we have um, a neutral candle close, even though we have a bullish candle body here, the pin makes it neutral. So in this case, I am looking for uh, price to basically go up and test this 134.70 level again. So we may see something like this, test 
and then a drop. So we may see if it goes all the way up here at 134.70, there may be a potential shorting opportunity. So um, the bias here will be neutral um, for me or even bearish once it gets into the high. So if we take a look at here, so if the price, as the price comes into this R1 level, into this high, I would be looking for a potential double top. So that's a, so this one right here, so something like that, we could see a double top, or if it goes into the high here, then we could see a double top there. But I'm not sure if it's gonna go all the way up there. So that this is where I would be looking for my first opportunity at 134, about 60-ish level. So into this R1 level, which is the previous day high as well. Uh, see if we can get a reversal pattern there. And we could see price drop. My target is 133.00. So essentially 133.00 will be the target to the downside, which is the bottom here. So my bias is uh, bearish to neutral here, just looking for price to push up a little bit. So we could see, um, a setup at that level. Aussie has still been bullish. So it's closed above here, above this previous high, so which makes it bullish. So the target here would be the biases to the upside based on the bullishness. 77.20 will be the target to the upside, which is this previous support and resistance area. But if the US dollar starts to get strong, then this could weaken as well. So I would be mindful of that. But for now, it is holding above the previous highs. And if it breaks above the high here, so if it breaks above this high at 77.80 level here, um, then the chances are it's going to continue higher into 77.20 level. So 76.80 would be sort of that um, level to watch out for. If it closes above that, then I'm looking for price to move up higher. But if everything else starts to drop against the US dollar, so this could drop as well. But based on the daily candle close, um, it is bullish. So I'm looking for price to move up higher. New Zealand dollar here. New Zealand has had a drop here, um, but we are into support. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so this previous resistance is turning support here. So based on daily candle close, it looks bearish. Um, but overall, though, we this is we're still bullish here because the price has moved up higher. So the key here would be the 6980 level. Just like the other one, so if the price stays above the 69.80 level, so this level, so if price stays above this level, then we could see it go higher. Um, and the target would be 70.89 area. Um, but if the price, let's say, drops through here, um, we could see one of these moves and then back into this 69.20 area. So this one, we have to be open. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, so we have to be open with this one. Uh, but daily candle close is bearish. So if you take a look at our one hour, so as we can see, price is moving lower. But see if it closes below the 69.80 level, this level right here. If it closes below this level, then chances are it's going to come lower. But if it stays above, then it could go higher here because the overall move here is still bullish um, but the daily is uh, bearish. Dollar CAD here. Dollar CAD um, unfortunately took its time to drop today, went up um, higher than I had expected. I was looking for a drop like this, um, or not specifically like this, but I was looking for a drop. Unfortunately, it happened after I got stopped out here. Um, but this is um, looking, so this was the set, sort of the setup here, the rounded formation. Generally what happens is when price rounds off like that, um, it drops. And that's what I was looking for yesterday. So I was looking for it to stay here. So I was looking for it to stay below this level and then continue lower, but it unfortunately pushed up higher here. So anyway, so going into the daily close here, um, this is a bearish to neutral close. Uh, we do have a big pin here, which makes it a little bit, which makes it neutral because body is right in the middle here. We have pins on both sides, but the close is below the previous day. 
And um, so that gives it a bearish bias. So the first target would be 127.60, second one, 127.20. So let's take, go take a look. So here we are. Um, so this one probably we don't even need that anymore. We can bring it lower. So this is what we're looking at. So the first target, let's say, is 127.20 level, which is um, right above there bottom which is also our s1 level and as we can see price is um, holding the previous level here previous support and resistance level it's holding this level and here's our pivot point so pushed into the pivot point already so now i'm looking for it to drop into s1 and then further into 126.50 if it drops below this level so the bias is bearish for dollar cad um, Euro Swiss franc here, we have a nice pin bar. Um, again, we have seen price stay in this range for quite some time now, so for a number of weeks. So I'm looking for price to drop back into this level, 1.1580 level. So the bias is bearish. We have a bearish pin bar on the daily. Uh, this is a pound Swiss franc here. We do have a bullish candle close for the day. So um, I think we had talked about this. We have two um, neutral candles, which generally means it doesn't want to go lower. So it has pushed up higher. And now we are into resistance. So this is an interesting time. 133.14 um, level here will be interesting. So I would even say 133.20 level. So if the price stays below this level, we could see one of these because price has reacted multiple times at this level. So this is a strong resistance level. So if it is not able to cross above the 133.20 level, then the chances are we're gonna see it come back into the range here um, and move back towards the middle of the range. So in that case, the target will be um, into this level. So let me just move my... Okay, so this is the level here, 13198. So 13200 is where I'm looking for price to come back to if it stays below 13314 level. However, if it crosses to the upside, then we could see the price go up higher into 1.3400 level. So that's the, those are the levels. So this is this is the first level that I'm going to be watching for pound Swiss franc. So dollar Swiss franc here, we have a bullish candle close, but we are into resistance here as well. So as we can see, we are into this, um, this previous level here. So now if the price stays below this level, because the overall bias is down to the downside here. So if you were to draw our line, we are still sort of biased to the downside because uh, well, because of this, like, so right now price is pushed up and now it could, uh, if it stays below 0 0.9900, then chances are it's going to continue lower. And then we're looking at 98.20 level. That would be the target. However, if the price breaks above this 9900 level, then we are looking for price to go higher. And in that case, the target would be 99.75 level, which is the top of this pin. So let's take a look at yen crosses here. Um, we have a bearish candle close here, bearish pin bar here for pound yen. So this looks bearish, looking for pound to drop. And 149.86 level or 80 level will be the target to the downside. So pound yen looks bearish at the moment. Um, Euro yen here has had a nice drop. So big drop in Euro yen. Um, it's sitting into the support here though, but looks like it's holding the support, which means it could drop lower. So 131.50 level here is the, is the target. So which is the bottom here of this previous, like this big hole, uh, this big range that we are in. So I'm looking for price to drop towards the bottom of the range. 
and looking at the one hour, so it looks like it is holding this level. So as long as it holds here, um, looking for price to drop. So we are basically looking for a continuation here, drop, um, going side consolidation, drop. So that's what I would be looking for. It could go back into the pivot point. So that's something to be mindful of if the price goes back to test the pivot point and then drops. But if it consolidates here and it breaks the low, then I'm looking for price to drop. So bias is to the downside, very bearish candle close for the day. Uh, from fundamentals perspective with the ECB, Euro is uh, bearish as well. So that's that, um, Aussie. So Aussie here, it's starting to get compressed. Um, we're seeing these pins here now. Um, so pin is bigger than the body. So overall, this is bullish to neutral here. So this one will likely depend on what all the other yen crosses do. If all the other yen crosses drop, which means the yen is strengthening, then this could go with it. Uh, but otherwise, the daily candle close is uh, bullish to neutral. So what that means is we could um, see the price go up and then do a test of this level once again. <laughs> so, excuse me, 86.50 level would be the level to watch. If it goes into that level, we could look for, <laughs> excuse me, uh, some sort of a double top formation, um, and we could get a nice short off of there. So that's for Aussie yen and uh, dollar yen. Um, bearish to neutral candle close for the day. We have pins on both sides, but the price has closed below the previous low. So the bias is still to the downside. And again, if all the other yen crosses are dropping, this is likely to drop here as well. But the target here is 112. So this will be a strong level. Uh, something that we'll have to watch because if it doesn't go below this 112, um, then it could go back. Um, so that's something to watch out for. But once it breaks this 112 level, then we are looking at 111.50 level. Essentially, that will be the next target to the downside. Uh, but because price has rejected this level tw twice, it makes it a very important level. And if it's not able to breach it the third time, chances are it could go higher from there. Last one, CAD yen, very, very neutral close here. So Canadian dollar is strong right now, especially after Bank of Canada, um, Governor Paul Polaz's speech there. So as a result of that, this is very neutral. Probably not the best one to trade of all the yen crosses. I think Euro yen or pound yen may be the better ones to look at than this one because this is very neutral, hasn't been able to break the low. So this could go either way. Okay, any questions or comments? Um, Joe, do you have a question? Um, okay, so, um, so the way I look at it is, um, we are going into holiday trading. So it is, I don't like to trade during the holidays because the liquidity is low and small things can bounce the price around. So what I was thinking was essentially to take the rest of the year off that we basically just take a break from trading for a bit um, and we can get back, kind of get started again um, for the week of the, uh, the 8th, so January the 8th. Let me just bring up. Um, so here we are. So we are um, December 15th. And then so just take these couple weeks off and then everybody will start coming back. Monday's a holiday. Um, and then people will start coming back this week. And then we actually get back on track the following week, like full on, full back fully back on our schedule. Um, and another thing I wanted to do was also, because we are not really trading a whole lot this week and I've been sick and I've not been able to be fully present here. Um, so what I would like to do is 
um, a refund all the payments for December. Um, so thank you guys for all your support. You guys have been, um, you know, very, very supportive. Uh, I really appreciate that. So I'd like to just, uh, I will just go ahead and just refund all the payments for, you know, on December and then we'll come uh, kind of come back January. We'll set some goals and going into January, I would like to do, um, I'm putting this spreadsheet together and stuff. So I want to, I, I don't know if you guys have watched my, I did uh, on the podcast, I did a, a how to grow a small account. So I want us in the trading room. So I'm going to, I'm going to run an open challenge, but I'm going to, uh, but especially for people in the trade room, I want us to have a little bit more accountability around the trading. So that will be next year's goals. So I, I'll kind of lay that out. Um, maybe the first week of January, I'll start putting in some materials on what we are going to do, how we're going to track this, that type of stuff. So right now I'm just sort of figuring that out uh, for myself on how we can go about it. So I will, um, I will introduce that first week of January. So second week of January, we can uh, from eight, we can start um, going at it. So that's my plan. Any any thoughts on that? Does that work for you guys? But I do want to make sure you guys take take some time off, spend some time with family, and just you know relax. Not the best time to be trading. So might as well enjoy the holidays. And next year we'll come back at it, and we'll you know, we'll go at it with a, with a strong plan and we'll make sure we are, you know, holding each other accountable um, to that. So I will have some tools for us to do that as well. Does that work? Okay, perfect. Sounds good. So, um, so in that case, we will take from here on, um, I will do a weekly analysis uh, for... <coughs> Uh, sorry, um, for this Sunday and then um, not next Sunday or the following Sunday because it's New Year's Eve and one is Christmas Eve. So um, basically after this weekend, we'll just be on holidays um, and then we'll come back um, over the first week of January, but officially we'll start on January 8th or 7th, I should say, because we'll do a weekly analysis then. Okay, perfect. You guys have a wonderful holiday season and um, you should see some refunds come through on your account as well. So great. Thank you very much, you guys, for all your support. Really, really appreciate it. And I will be back with, um, I'll be back with you guys again in the new year. Bye for now.